yeah. Vladimir Putin promised that he was the only man who could keep Russians safe. I think there's going to be an awful lot of questions aimed at him and at the security services as to why this happened and why the response was so lackluster. You know, it seemed initially, as you say, you know, some of the some of the footage was absolutely horrific. People on the burning roof of the building begging to be rescued, people pleading for their lives and then being shot by gunmen. I think these scenes will, for Russians, really evoke some of the worst moments in the country's uh, internal history. Now, Russian news agencies in the last few minutes have been reporting that four people involved in the Moscow Concert Hall shooting are among 11 people being detained. Let's get some more details on this from Gabriel Gavin, who reports on Russia for Politico. Uh, good morning, Gabriel. Clearly, um, this is news that we're just receiving in the last few minutes. Um, what are um, the F FSB and the Russian news agencies saying? Yeah, well, good morning. Russia is waking up to one of the deadliest attacks that the country has seen in recent decades. So at least 60 people are now confirmed to have died, and as many as 150 have been wounded after a group of camouflage-clad gunmen stormed a popular Moscow concert venue last night. Uh, as you've said, in the last few minutes, we've had a statement from Russia's security services, the FSB, saying that a total of 11 people have been detained, and as, as many as four of those might have been involved in the uh, attack. There was also a quite dramatic moment where there was a car chase close to the Belarus border and two supposed suspects were arrested. ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attacks uh, and those uh, being detained are believed to be nas nationals from Tajikistan, which obviously borders Afghanistan. And there'd been speculation that a group called ISK, which is the local Afghan affiliation uh, of, of the Islamic State of Daesh, uh, were involved in the attack. And that's since been kind of, you know, borne out by an ISIS statement saying, yes, we were behind this. Because of the age in which we live, of course, there is lots of video footage which has been uploaded onto social media from people who were in the area when these gunmen attacked. Um, it looks utterly terrifying. People will say they'll draw comparisons with the attacks in the Bataclan many years ago. And questions will be asked about security. Was there any security, do we know, at the concert which could have protected people? Well, from everything I've seen, it's it doesn't appear that any government security services were present at the concert, which is absolutely remarkable when you consider the scenes we saw just a few weeks ago at Alexei Navalny's funeral, where you had you know thousands of peaceful demonstrators coming out to mourn uh, the murdered opposition leader, and they were met with this huge state apparatus, you know, armed police, riot police. Uh, and I think that shows you a, a little bit of where Russia's priorities are. Uh, you know, the security services have been massively stretched by the war in Ukraine. They're currently fighting against uh, Ukrainian uh, efforts to strike oil refineries deep inside the country and take away some of the money that Russia earns and uses to buy drones and missiles that kill Ukrainians. Um, at the same time, the FSB has had to uh, act on orders uh, to crack down on any kind of dissent inside Russia. You've seen 80-year-old women standing in the street with blank placards being detained by six, seven, eight, uh, you know, uh, balaclava-wearing uh, security agents. So the, I think the question, particularly after an election where Vladimir Putin promised that he was the only man who could keep Russians safe, I think there's going to be an awful lot of questions aimed at him and at the security services as to why this happened and why the response was so lackluster. You know, it seemed initially, as you say, you know, some of the some of the footage was absolutely horrific. People on the burning roof of the building begging to be rescued, people pleading for their lives and then being shot by gunmen. I think these scenes will, for Russians, really evoke some of the worst moments in the country's uh, internal history. You know, there was the siege of a of the Nord Ost Theatre in 2022 that killed 132 people. And then before that, you have events like the Beslan school siege, which killed hundreds of uh, children and, and teachers uh, that really rattled Putin in, in the early years of his presidency. So this is obviously a tragedy, but the recriminations are only just beginning. And also, it will leave people scratching their heads, the fact that the US passed warnings onto Russia a couple of weeks ago, despite their current relations, that they'd had a warning that there could be a terrorist attack at somewhere like a concert, and they had actually warned US citizens in Russia that they should avoid um, areas where there are mass gatherings. And yet it appears that Russia didn't pass this on to its citizens or indeed act on it. 
Well, I think there's, that's always going to spark uh, kind of conspiracy theories uh, among certain circles. But the U.S. statement came because Russia said it had intercepted a plot uh, on behalf of the this ISK terrorist organization. Um, but certainly, it doesn't seem that Russia has taken its own warnings seriously. It doesn't seem that Russia has acted uh, to, you know, obviously prevent this particular instance. And I think people often see Russia as a country that they're surprised when it has terrorist attacks or they're surprised when it has, you know, uh, ISIS activity. Uh, but obviously, this is a country that for years has been killing civilians in Syria, making itself deeply unpopular in the Arab world. It's a country that, um, you know, has been embroiled in wars in Afghanistan in the not too distant past. It's a country that, you know, has supported strongmen in the in, in the wider region, uh, tried to advance its interests at the expense of its reputation on the world stage. And I I think it's absolutely unsurprising that you know uh, it would it would also be a target for terrorist attacks. Uh, but I think what you've seen here is the perfect storm potentially of the security services being entirely distracted with this kind of catastrophic invasion of Ukraine uh, and repressions at home, and effectively taking their eye off the ball. And I think Russians, especially those who've lost loved ones who were just going out to a concert, uh, will uh, will be asking questions. Gabriel, thank you so much for that update. That is Gabriel Gavin, who reports on Russia for Politico. And it's worth pointing out there's been no public statement from Ple President Putin yet, uh, which isn't unusual in these kind of situations, but can nonetheless be a little surprising. Um, I just want to bring you this update, which is reaching us that at least 93 people have now been confirmed dead in that shooting at the Crocus City Hall in Moscow. That's according to Russia's investigative committee. And they have said that the death toll will rise further. We know it's around 110 people who have been injured, but we know that there were over 6,000 people inside that concert at the time. Um, so those are the latest figures which are being uh, released at the moment from Russia's investigative committee. At least 93 people uh, confirmed dead after that shooting in Moscow yesterday.